then wet again, sometimes in the space of a thousand years. Punishing drought alternated with storms and monsoons. Rivers and forests sprang up, then turned to dry grassland, all in the evolutionary blink of an eye. So we have a complete change of our ideas, from this slow drying out to this incredible change between wet and dry, wet and dry. What effect did that have on our ancestors? Could these periods of climate instability be the key to understanding the evolutionary leap from small bipedal apes to the larger brained toolmaker, Homo habilis? To know that, scientists needed a detailed record that went back further than the diatoms, way back to the time when Homo habilis was evolving two million years ago. That's only found in one place, under the ocean. Layers of deep sea sediment tell a story that goes back millions of years. They have to be drilled from the ocean floor. At his laboratory in upstate New York, Peter Domenical keeps thousands of columns of sand, silt, and rock, a library of ocean cores. One of the really attractive features about ocean sediments is that they accumulate very slowly, but very gradually and continuously over time. Each three-foot-long core holds a continuous record of dust carried on the wind from Africa into the ocean, where it now sits on the bottom. There we go, nice! There you go. Wow, sweet, okay. An expert eye can detect distinct layers, thick in dry years, when the dust is easily picked up by the wind, thin in wet years. By measuring the layers, they can tell when the climate was wet or dry. So we can read these deep sea sediments almost like an earth history book of past changes in climate. To make sense of all this dirt, they have to know when it blew into the ocean. They can do this by dating the shells of tiny sea creatures that sank to the bottom at the same time. So this gives us an age. The other analysis gives us the climate. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Peter took this finely detailed climate diary and compared it to the grand arc of our human evolution. For the three million years between Tumai and Salam, when brain size was flatlining, African climate was stable, dry, getting a little drier. Then came 200,000 years of wildly varying climate, careening unpredictably between wet and dry. During that time, stone tools appeared, along with the larger-brained creatures that made them. Africa was also home to many other human-like species. Climate instability put pressure on all of them. So there are these time periods when African climate was really unstable, so anything that was living there at the time would have had to adapt to really dramatically different climate changes. Those that couldn't adapt died out, like Salam and Lucy's kind. <laughs> Better problem solvers, like Homo habilis, survived. The new discoveries about ancient climate upheavals in Africa have led Rick Potts to formulate a bold theory of human evolution. The traditional idea we have had about human evolution is that it was the savanna, the grassy plain with some trees on it, that was the driving force. But instead, what we've discovered is that climate changed all the time. And so the idea that we've come up with is that variability itself was the driving force of human evolution, and that our ancestors were adapted to change itself. It's a simple but revolutionary idea. Human evolution is nature's experiment with versatility. We're not adapted to any one environment or climate, but to many. We are creatures of climate change. I think we should actually look to our proud ancestry and how we evolved in East Africa and say, that's how we survived that. We can survive the future. Because we are that creature, because we are that smart. 
Today, climate change seems to threaten our survival. But it may have held the keys to the astonishing story of how we became who we are. Because it didn't stop two million years ago. These dramatic upheavals would continue for another million and a half years, propelling our ancestors down a road leading ultimately to the smartest creature the world has ever known.